Hi, I'm Ryan. Welcome to FELT, a programming language for arts and crafts. Uh, the FELT project is something I've been working on for about three years. It's a design for a programming language, a tree walking interpreter for that language, which is now only used for tests, a compiler which outputs WASM, a runtime, a linker that combines that runtime and that uh, output WASM, and some editor tooling. So the goals, I would generally describe at a high level felt as a toy language for making toys because I am not building this language in a production-y, serious way, and I'm not writing anything production-y or serious with it. Instead, I have like three goals in order, have fun, learn something, and prove a point. You might notice that be useful isn't on that list, and we'll get to that in a second, but that's an intentional omission. So to having fun, um, Writing a compiler and creating a programming language is a series of like weird, crunchy, logical computer science challenges that you really only get in like a classroom. You're you know creating trees out of parsed data and then manipulating those trees and transforming those trees and making graphs out of trees. A lot of trees are involved. Um, and you're never going to run out of things to do, right? You're never going to run out of like interesting, thinky problems to solve because frankly, you're never going to finish it. I also learned something. I learned like a lot. Um, I wrote most of the things you'll see today from scratch, um, including when it was inadvisable. I implemented some papers. It was the first time I ever really implemented a paper. It was pretty simple, but it was about like control flow graphs. So like, how do we know if this line of code will ever result in going to this other line of code? You cre create a control flow graph to answer those kind of questions. Something I learned kind of on accident was empathy for language developers. Um, there's like a lot of syntactical ambiguity, right? Like why do we have semicolons? Oh, like turns out like writing error messages without them is really hard. And error messages generally, getting good error messages out of a compiler is like a total nightmare. So you'll see later, Felt's error messages are like three words long, right? And even that was, in my opinion, like a pretty big win. Um, so I have a lot of empathy for best in class programming languages with really good error reporting. And I wanted to prove a point. Um, I wanted to take a language like Rust that is you know, known for being expressive, known for having like, good safety and being high performance, and also known for being complex and like, hard to use, and say, what if we make that language easy to use? What if we make it simple and like, easy to pick up and easy to implement? Uh, without doing something, a lot of people say, oh, I want Rust with a garbage collector. That would make it simple. And my goal is do the exact opposite, right? Throw out all the things that everybody likes about it, except one little core, uh, and see what we can do from there. So I intentionally did not prioritize being useful. Uh, useful and fun, I think, might be antonyms. Uh, for example, you might, when you're writing a program, want to parse some JSON or deserialize, like you know, take some data and serialize the JSON. Um, that means that you're either now writing a JSON parser in your language, or you're binding to an existing JSON parser, and then you're gonna have to like figure out how to link in your JSON. And like, so now you're you're creating all these new problems, right? And now you have your JSON. I guess you want to send it over a network or write it to disk or something. So now you have another set of problems. I the only place I made concessions to usability was game development, right? I wanted a language that is decently performant and that can like push chunks of memory around so we can do basic physics and we can draw to the screen. And basically everywhere else that being useful meant doing something that wasn't fun, I decided not to do it. So we're gonna look at our first demo, which is just some basics and text and semantics of the language. We have our editor on the left. Um, here we see variables, they work the way you might expect. We can give them values, we can do operations on them, whatever. We can define data types. So here's, we got a two dimensional vector. We can define functions on our data types, felt as expression oriented, so we don't have to explicitly return this value. We just calculate it and then it gets returned. We have constants, right? We're calculating the area of a square here. This, this is a circle, sorry. Um, we have an interface, right? Interfaces work structurally, like they might in TypeScript or Go, where this interface will bind to anything that matches its signature. You don't have to explicitly implement them. They just work like types, right? You can just pass something in here. Um, here we have a union, which can have one of many different values. Um, this is like a variant or an enum or a union, depending on your language. And we have the case statement for matching over what's in a union. We have um, the ability to do it on a basic reference, which is shared and immutable, or a unique reference, which is uh, unique but mutable, right? This means that we can never have two writers uh, pointing to the same location, so we can't have data races. This is, if you're familiar with Rust, going to be like very 
familiar. It's like the, the rusty thing I have taken and like built the whole language around. And here we have uh, maybe the most basic program. We create a rectangle, we create a circle, and we're going to find a difference in their area. So we're going to compile, which created a file called out.wasm, and we're going to run it. And we're going to see the difference between the rectangle and circles area is 19 units, in case you wanted to know. We're also, yeah, so WebAssembly, WASM, is what felt outputs. And you may notice that there was no web browser at all involved in that little demo. Uh, WebAssembly was created for the browser. Uh, it's a virtual instruction architecture. The idea is you can compile something like C to it, and you can include native code in the browser that is sandboxed, but also decently performant. Um, increasingly, like, cloud companies are pushing it. Um, I think it's a Goldilocks compiler target. If you ever find yourself running a compiler, I really recommend trying to learn WASM because it's high level enough that you can uh, do it without learning all these things like register allocation and uh, you know managing your stack. But uh, it's low level enough that you're running within an order of magnitude of native performance. So it's like a, a decent middle. So our second demo is errors. Uh, the Felt compiler produces errors that we can see in our editor. So here we have a type mismatch. Here we have an arithmetic error. We're not going to tell you what it is, just that it's arithmetic. Uh, here we have a variable we didn't declare, an unknown field, right? So we can jump to our error. We can say, oh, okay, if we didn't want to turn it in, we wanted a string. Maybe we wanted to add here, or maybe we wanted to concatenate strings. Um, here, let's declare our variable, right? And we can see these editors just go away as we're fixing them, thanks to the language server protocol. So what's that? Uh, the language server protocol allows you to write a program that serves as the like IDE smarts for any editor. Uh, it was very familiar to me with a web dev background because it's just a JSON client server architecture. Um, in my case, I wrote the server in Felt and then, oh, sorry, I wrote the server in Rust for Felt. Uh, and then uh, I bound it to my editor. You could just as easily do it for your editor. I really recommend playing with it. It's like surprisingly simple. And tree sitter is how we're getting syntax highlighting. There's a slight learning curve. You define your grammar in their DSL, and then you get a parser you can use wherever you want, syntax highlighting in any editor you want. And so this is like the one part of Felt that's built like a, a real grown-up language, um, because you get the real grown-up tools um, even just for your own little toy. And our last demo is a game. So this is the like reason I made Felt, and we're going to use Felt Game Shell, which is going to combine our compiler with some uh, graphics APIs, and here we see our little mascot platformer, right? Um, we can jump around, we can uh, bounce off blocks. All the physics and graphics stuff is all in Felt. Um, and one thing that's neat about Felt's model is that we can uh, make changes to this program. So let's change the background to be a little less bright. And we can reload with a keystroke. We can change the color of those magenta blocks to be uh, a little less... I don't know, eye searing. Um, and we're every time we hit the R key, we're recompiling the whole program, we're reloading it, we're replacing it in memory, all without losing our game state. And we can do that for simple things like changing the color. We can also do it for complicated things. Like let's say um, being grounded is now about having a block above you and gravity is negative and jumping is positive. And we come back over to our game and now we fall up to the ceiling, right? And we can continue iterating on things like this. To me, this was like the killer feature because when you're writing a game, you want to be able to quickly iterate on mechanics uh, and game feel and graphics and all that kind of thing and felt kind of struck a balance for me between like a scripting language where you don't get performance, but you do get this kind of reloading capability and like a compiled language where it's harder to get this reloading, but you get that performance. So my like takeaway from Felt is to build toys. It doesn't really matter if Felt is like effective, if it's useful, because uh, it exists in its in its form, and it was fun to make. Um, you get to learn a lot when you build toys, uh, because I got to be a lot more ambitious with this language than I could have been if I needed it to be correct. Right? I encountered three compiler bugs while preparing my demos for today that I may not fix, and that's fine. Right? I don't have any customers. <laughs> Um, and uh, I was able to like write a borrow checker. I was able to write move semantics. I was able to you know like write all all these things for felt that I absolutely could not have if I said what's a reasonable scope for what I can get done usefully in three years. I absolutely couldn't have included those things. 
Um, and here are some needle felted mu mushrooms my partner and I made a couple years ago, which was the inspiration for the name for the language, because needle felting is this craft that requires like industrial capacity. You have to make these really specific needles. And then all you get to do with it is make fun stuff. You can't like needle felt a coat. You'll be there for a long time. Um, so you have this like real heavy industrial process. And then at the end, all you have is uh, arts and crafts. And that's like the, the motto of felt to me. Um, thank you.